Ah, fuck! Hello there, collectors. It's Steven here with the Chogokin Tamashi Mix Mecha Godzilla Orai Norioshi poster version with a side of spaghetti and meatballs served over other words to make the title ridiculously long. Much like Sakai's Godzilla 2000 Millennium sculpt, this design of Mecha Godzilla is a concept figure. Though intended to be in a movie, this design of Mechagodzilla was not used in the Heisei-era movie Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Instead, it was just featured on the poster. Much like some of the recent Soul of Chogokin figures, which, by the way, reviewers have been wrong, Gaigan, Kiyu, and the Showa Mechagodzilla figures are Chogokins, not Souls of. This Mechagodzilla can split apart and combine in the whole nine yards. We have a ton of ground to cover, and mine is broken. So let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. This is also an unboxing video as well, since I never had the chance to really make one of those for this guy. The theme of the box was to best recreate the poster of the Heisei film, and they did a great job of that. And the box is huge. I can't do my normal turntable thing with this guy's box. It makes a wonderful display piece alongside the figure, and it's intended to be a counterpart with the SH Monster Arts Godzilla released alongside it. So here's a shot of those two boxes together. Now, let's look at how you open up the box, and we get a lot of cool stuff here. First, when we open it up, we get a nice slip cover for the styrofoam container with the figures in it. Very cool. Now, aside from me explaining a few key parts here and there, I'll go ahead and I'll let this play with some nice background music to it. Have fun! Here's where I just point out that the copyright information on the figure is actually on the bottom of the support stand, which we'll actually take a look at a little bit later. Alright, to kick things off, we're going to take a look at the fully assembled and combined Mecha Godzilla, and boy howdy does he look great. The other Mecha Godzillas have a straight silver or gray coloration to them throughout, but this one's base color is actually a bluish gray, which is accented by wonderful metallic blue fingertips, spots of yellow here and there, and what I think makes this figure grand is that even though the concept is meant to be a fully combined mech, you can still see aspects of each of the individual vehicles in the combined form. So that means later when we look at them individually, it'll be a quicker look over them to save some time. Sound good? All right. So let's take a closer look at this guy. First off, the head, which utilizes translucent plastic for the eyes, which is fan freaking tastic. Fierce look to it, much like the original Showa Mecha Godzilla. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the mouth. The Garuda's tips, <laughs> yeah, uh, they're nicely painted red alongside the side of the head where we have those little red dots. Very nice to see clean paint applications here. The shoulder parts are painted just as well in the little pillars, spikes, whatever you'd call those. The wings of the Garuda really add to the size of this figure overall, which is a plus for some, a minus for others, because as we all know, shelf space is very, very prime. The mechanical details on the figure are truly fantastic and the little panels and the sculpt marks are clearly noted. 
Admittedly, a bit of weathering here or there might have been great, but regardless whether it's the yellow paint on the hidden maser in the hips or the clear blue fingertips, which, by the way, those hoses are bendy, you'll see that in a little bit, this figure can truly be contender for one of the best-looking figures to come from Bandai as of late. Which is ultimately impressive, despite being a transforming, combining, whatever you want to call it, gimmick figure, they could have sold this figure without that gimmick, and I don't think it would have affected the look that much. That is how awesome this figure is. Alright, now the articulation and where I show you the die cast would be on the figure. We're going to keep this panel off because that's going to be a pain for this section. So you go away. Okay, so what do we got? So we have the jaw, which opens and closes on a hinge, just like that. You see? Hi, hello. We do have a swivel where the head plugs into the neck, which is really cool. And then the base of the neck here is actually on a ball joint, so you can get him to rock his head around from side to side like that, forward and back. And that's about as far down as he's going to look, and that's about as far up. So he's looking straight up in the air on that one, folks. That is really cool. So what next do we have? Well, we do have the tips of the Garuda, which can sort of shimmy in and out. You'll see that more in the articulation section. Not really articulation as much as it is parts can move. The wings on the Garuda do actually move. There are two hinge joints at the base of the wings. So you're going to have to be careful because when you get them in the box, it comes kind of flat like that. And you're going to have to move that second hinge up. And then once you do, you're actually going to have movement there. So then you also do have another hinge in about the middle of the wing section there, which is really cool. And then these little turbines, they actually flip around. So that's really cool. This is just made of softer plastic. No articulation there, but hey, you know, that wiggles around. All right. So next up, we have swivels in the shoulders. They actually ratchet, so that's pretty good. But what you're seeing here a little bit as I move the shoulders around, you're probably seeing this tip of the Garuda move, right? Right. Well, unfortunately, if you move Mechagodzilla's arm too far, you may actually push it to the point where that shoulder pillar is beneath this portion of the Garuda. And if you try to move it back, that's not good. A lot of people freak out about that. But you know what? Let's use our brains here. We'll move them out around. Just like that. Okay? Okay. So that leads up to the next point. We do have a hinge right here in the shoulder for Mechagodzilla, and we do have a bicep swivel. We also have a hinge in the elbow, so this way we can move Mechagodzilla's arms forward like that. There's also like a micro hinge, kind of like a little bit of a tilt there. That's pretty cool. And there's also a swivel in the forearm for that cannon. So that's nice. So you can even sort of get an old-school Mechagodzilla point there if you wanted to do that that's always nice to see there so cool lots of articulation there we do have uh, for some reason they included what's essentially ball jointed movement where the fingertips are at that portion there you can see the tubes like i said before they move around but um yeah you can move these it's pretty cool kind of freaked me out once i popped those out the first time but uh, yeah so the arm articulation on mechagodzilla here is Awesome. Just make sure you're not uh, confusing yourself too much whenever you're uh, moving Mechagodzilla's arms around because, as you can clearly see, it's very easy to get confused whether or not you swiveled something in a particular direction. Okay? Okay. So we do have a little bit of a waist swivel, but once you have Mechagodzilla fully combined, uh, you're not really going to be able to turn it too, too much. You can just get a little bit of a movement there from side to side. That's about it. We do have a system here for the hips, which is essentially a swivel forward and back, and a hinge out to the side. That is about it, but we get a nice wide range of movement there considering the figure has a transformation gimmick. Unfortunately, that swivel is very tight and it always feels like I'm going to snap it whenever I'm moving it. So yeah, that's not very good. But there are die cast parts in there to help protect against breakage. So yeah, that's going <laughs> to that's gonna take some skill to break that. Uh, these do move, but you know they don't really do much. So yeah. Okay, there's that. Then we do have hinged knees. You can hear them clicking. These little kneecaps move. They're little guns. They kind of move forward and back a little bit, but it's mostly side to side. Then we don't really have ankle rocker movement, but we can push the ankles forward and back a little bit. And then we do have a bit of a toe hinge, as you can see there. That's part of the transformation process, so eh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. For the tail... 
It is supposed to clip in, but as you'll see later, I don't necessarily recommend that. But we do actually have some free movement here. I'm not sure what kind of joint I would call this, probably a system of hinges and swivels, but it does look like there's a bit of ball joint movement. But that's about as far side to side as you're gonna be able to move it, which isn't really too much. You can go straight out, or you can curl it up kind of like that. So that is that from Mecha Godzilla in terms of articulation, pretty much. Not too, too much movement, but we're able to get a whole bunch of solid movement out of key areas you normally wouldn't expect, and he's pretty expressive. Unfortunately, no ankle rockers there. Now, let's talk about the die cast really quick. Like I mentioned before, we do have some die cast down here in the hips, so you can tell that it's die cast because it's really cold, especially right now in the winter. But we do also have some die cast in the lower portion of the legs. The wheels are feeling kind of cold up here by this portion. We do have some die cast in the back of the legs here. That's cold. This whole lower section is feeling cold. Up here, no cold. The arms... The biceps are actually feeling rather cold. They're rather chilly, so that does indicate that there's die cast there. There's die cast right here for this portion of the chest for Mechagodzilla where the shoulders would be at. Hmm, I wonder if that plays a part in anything. And unfortunately, there doesn't really seem to be any die cast for the Garuda portion of Mechagodzilla. Would there be other die cast in some spots? Potentially. Do I know where it's at? No. But I can say that if you look around Mechagodzilla, you'll see little pins and whatnot for different points of the articulation, like right down here, that would be die cast in and of itself to provide some support. So we do have some ratcheting joints throughout Mechagodzilla along with die cast support in key areas, but unfortunately that die cast support wasn't necessarily enough in my case to prevent breakage. Articulation is very, very good for the design, to be perfectly honest with you, and I'm surprised that we're able to get as much as we can out of this guy. But just a couple of more joints, like maybe an ankle rocker, would have made this guy so much better. The extra section. This Mecha Godzilla comes separated in the box and he's disassembled, as you saw, in three different vehicles. Now it's time to take a look at each one of them individually. We have the Garuda, the plane, the Gundalva, the tank like vehicle with the arms, and then the Naga, the Mole Mazer Cannon. The Garuda is much different than the one that we know and love, this one looking much more ferocious. Hiding Mechagodzilla's head, this edgy version looks pretty sweet and terrifying. In terms of accessories for the overall package, this one gets lucky. The support stand included slips into the tail gap, allowing it to hover. So yeah, the Garuda gets the only accessory in the box. Here's a look at the standalone articulation for the Garuda real quick, which is mostly identical to when it's fully transformed into Mechagodzilla. Next up, the Gondalva, and... Man, this thing is weird. I mean, it's kind of like a Mazer tank, but it's not. But it is, but it's not. I don't know. It's very sci-fi here. It gets even weirder when you move the arms around when it's not combined together to form Mechagodzilla. So, yeah. Kind of creepy. That's the articulation on this little guy. Next up, we have the Naga, which is the burrowing Mazer tank hybrid cannon thingamajig. Very neat looking indeed, reminiscent of Mogera, and obviously my favorite of the three. The design does make sense all around, it's all fine and dandy, and the parts on it move as well. Just like when formed as Mechagodzilla, and yes, those wheels do spin. Now the transformation section. I'll go through it step by step here for you with some nice stock music. Here we go!
Now, I did avoid some steps here because of safety reasons. These pins are incredibly difficult to pop apart sometimes safely, and given how easy this figure can be to break, I suggest that some parts you don't necessarily connect together completely because it really doesn't add in any layer of security. Just, the choice is yours. Now, you want to know how I broke Mecha Godzilla here, huh? Well, you see, in these pinholes here, there's a chip. I didn't cause this, it came out of the box this way. That chip doesn't hold the shoulders in place correctly, and since the shoulder areas are loose in addition to the tail pin being too stuck when I tried to pop it off, and the instructions telling you to plug the neck into the peg on the shoulders, which was also stuck, I popped off the Gerudo when changing it back and that panel sheared off. Just kinda like how I'm showing you here. That's why I would be careful when transforming this guy. Don't force anything at all even if it's just a little bit. The brake kinda was my fault, but given the unit was faulty to begin with, it was pretty much inevitable. As a bonus, the Naga and the Gundalva can be joined together to make a deluxe Mazer Cannon. I think that's what it would be called? Uh -uh. I, I don't know. Anyway, the transformation is easy to follow, and it is also outlined in the instructions you'll get with the figure. And though, it is very cool. It's pretty much the step in between the normal figures and Mecha Godzilla. I don't know why someone would want to display it like this. I mean, it's not bad. It's cool that it can happen. It's just kind of a head scratcher. Now, there's one other thing that Mecha Godzilla comes with, and you saw this during the unboxing section. We get a nice little booklet here, and once you open that booklet up, it's actually a manga giving us the tale of exactly how this figure came to be, going all the way back to Godzilla vs. Mothra in the Heisei era. How cool is that? Inside of this little manga here, we do have some concept shots of different types of Mecha Godzillas. There's also Mazinger in one of the panels here. Yeah, not going to show you everything because I'm sure there are some copyright laws against that, and you're going to have to buy the figure yourself to see that. And uh, though I can't read a lick of any of this, it's still nice to have. I just wish that they would have maybe gone the extra mile and included an English language version of this. But still, it's a nice collector's item. Much better than a postcard. And we're going to finish up this review with a size comparison alongside the Godzilla, which was released with this Mecha Godzilla. Like I said in that review, I am not going to reuse those size comparison pictures. As you can see, this is one big Mecha Godzilla figure, and he does hog some shelf space. So, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Mecha Godzilla looks good with nice articulation and a cool gimmick, but Bandai neglected to actually think about key, weak areas in the figure which could have easily resulted in breakage. They load up this thing with die casts and inconvenient areas which makes the arms for the Gundalva move, but the chest panels on the Garuda are thin, brittle plastic. The SH Monster Arts Kiryu has die cast in the chest. At MSRP, the worry about breaking something when transforming shouldn't even be possible. And no, despite it being simple in concept, the transformation really isn't easy to do the first couple of times that you do it. I was kind of scared. Now, I kind of get it. All in all, though, I do like the figure. I think it is cool that we're seeing something like this in the market. However, is it worth MSRP? No. Does it have issues? Yeah. If you can find it for a reasonable price, I would say maybe around 150 and south of that. I think it's a solid purchase. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected STR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description, too, to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links, like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.